Broadcasting Community Radio from Studio A and Community Television from Studio B on the Voice 17104.com. Blessings, everyone. Welcome to the Salvation for All Ministries broadcast, a Christian based outreach ministry for those who are seeking deliverance from their struggle with homosexuality. Here's your host, Reverend Waverly Dixon. Good afternoon, and most of all, Happy New Year. It's a belated Happy New Year, but Happy New Year, because the last time I was engaging with you, it was in November, actually, right before Thanksgiving. So bless God. I'm glad we're all able to be here for those of us who made it. Um, I just want to let you know that today, before I get started with the presentation, is actually the third um, uh, part of the series that uh, the Lord had put on my heart. And actually, the next time I meet with you, it will be the final part, which will be part four. But today, the message is basically to get you to start thinking, thinking about how you can get out of this struggle. Uh, we want to identify in scripture where you can realize that what you're going through is not a permanent condition. In fact, you have the choice to decide how long you want it to last for yourself and for your family. Um, and the way out of it, you know, if you are a Christian and you believe the, the word of God, the way out of this struggle is through Christ Jesus, is through that relationship, is through that salvation that God has given us uh, through Christ Jesus, his son. But as always, and you know, I do it because this ministry is because of the Holy Spirit putting that seed of compassion inside my heart for those who are out there in the homosexual uh, lifestyle and they are struggling. Why? Because they want a way out. So he has put in my spirit, you know, uh, a compassion to try and reach those who are in this lifestyle and they need to know that they can get out of it and that the blood of Jesus did pay for that, pri pay for that price on the cross for them. So um, before I get started in the word, I want to invite the Holy Spirit, his presence here. Holy Spirit, you know that I love you. You know that I depend on you. And you know that everything that is going to be said today is authorized by you because I've sought your face and I trust that you've given me the word of God to, to share the word of God because it is his word that is the truth. It is his word that draws the believer. It is his word that will let anyone know that if they are being deceived because he is the word of truth. So Holy Spirit, do as you've always done. Be with us in this studio. Be with us upon this message for it is the heart of Christ that is reaching out to those who, who do not have an answer and they need to know that the answer is his because it is God who loved us so much, loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son and that is Jesus. And these things have been paid with his life on the cross. So Holy Spirit, thank you because that's what you do. You let us know who Christ is. You're the one that has sealed our salvation and we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. Okay. Um, Again, once again, I'm just going to thank you for being here. Just for those who um, may are just new to tuning in with me, this is a new day and a new hour. I'm usually on on Thursday afternoons at one o'clock, but today it, it it worked perfectly, you know, as far as timing and everything to choose today. So I'm letting you know that um, I'm here today. Praise God. Um, I will read uh, my Facebook post. I like to do that because those who may not have seen it, you know, here's what it is. Uh, it's today, January the 29th, and it's the year 2020. Can you imagine that? Okay, uh, the series uh, that I've been working on is uh, Struggling with Sin is a Choice, Not a Permanent Condition, and today this is part three. And I've asked that, um, you know, you would join me, Waverly Dixon, Reverend Waverly Dixon, Salvation for All Ministries broadcast on Wednesday, January 29th, 2020 at 3 p.m. as she continues her message series entitled, Struggling with Sin is a Choice, Not a Permanent Condition. In this message, the emphasis will be on the struggle, how it is defined and recognized in scripture as spiritual warfare. And I let you know that you can... Um, that all the broadcasts are recorded live at the voice 17104.com, an internet broadcasting radio station, in which I am here right now with the owner and my friend and pastor, uh, Chris uh, Thomas. And his wife is not here, but she's she's here in spirit. And I thank you, Melissa. Praise 
God. And also you can uh, see this uh, broadcast live from my, my own ministry page, which is Salvation for All Ministries, and at Facebook um, at Rev W. Dixon. Let us start with um, what struggle is. Just a dictionary definition when you, when you think of struggle. What is struggle? Okay. It says that struggle is an exertion or contention for superiority in a contest. It is also a violent effort or violent exertion, exertion excuse me, as in a battle, combat, tug of war, warfare. Yes. Okay, that's what a struggle is. And most people, when they're going through something that is opposing them or they are opposing something, it's going to be a struggle there because somebody wants to win yes, that main thought. Somebody wants to win the prize, if you will. And um, when you're actually in the struggle, the verb of that, because it's action, is what you're doing, it says it's to make strenuous efforts mm. against opposition, to proceed with difficulty mm -hmm. or with great effort. In other words, to strive, travail, travail strain, to toil, to work at it. And that's what... Um, most people are involved in in their life. They have some type of struggle, some type of, of, of hardship that they're trying to get out of. But in this case, because of the ministry that the Lord has put on my heart, uh, the struggle that we're speaking of here is those who um, are in the lifestyle and they want out of it. And even to just try to even tackle something like that is very different because especially if you yourself, which I'm one of the selves, that that was never my struggle. I was never had same sex attraction or anything like that. And I was never involved in those kinds of relationships. But at the same time, without sounding like an old cliche, it is very true. I truly, truly have friends, okay? Yes. And has had friends that are in the lifestyle and um, they got in it for many different reasons. And when I say friend, I, I truly mean that because we may have gone our different paths but that person truly was my friend and that was their that was their struggle at the time and also family members okay i have family members like that do i love my family members that are that way you better believe it sure. i really do and if i see them on the street i don't deny them i don't try to walk across the street act like i don't see them mm -hmm. because that's just ridiculous in my mind is everyone has something you yes. know and we have to all remember that we all have something that we that we have dealt with that the lord helped get us delivered from yeah. and I think that's the beauty of you know the word of God so even the things that I'm going to talk about today um it, it can be applied to anyone's life it really can but you as the person who may have you know been marginalized by the church because right. of of the relationships that you have that you know we know and you know as well that um it's been called a sin. It's been called a sin by the word of God. We cannot deny what God calls it. But in our minds, we may call it something else. But God says what it is. And that's the only thing that I can go by. That's what I believe his word. And I believe his definition of it. Okay. And I just wanted to put that out there first. The other thing I want to make very clear is this. There are things that anyone can do if they're trying to get out of struggle. But for this group of, of, of people, loved ones that I'm trying to reach in the body of Christ, it is this, you have to answer the main question. And the question is this, why are you struggling? Why? Okay, it starts with that. It's, it starts with why am I struggling in this lifestyle why am i struggling in these relationships and the only person that can answer that is you yes. okay it starts with having a a self reflection and and not being afraid to to look at your own answer um regardless of the reasons as, as to how you got there okay and the reason why i put that out there like that is because you responded in a way that has you caught up and you responded in a way that you're struggling with it now because for however you got in it you knew that probably at that time even if you weren't walking with the Lord something is not right here okay and my heart goes out to you 
because there are many different ways of how you could have gotten there. And I'm trying to uh, not cry here because when I, if I think too hard on it, it, it does touch me in that way. But what I'm saying to you is you need to answer that question because in order to move forward with how to get out of this lifestyle, you have to be honest with why you are in the lifestyle. Now, if you are struggling in this lifestyle, because you have not made up your mind yet, if you believe what God's word says about the, the lifestyle, if you not have made up your mind yet about it, the struggle is going to continue and it's going to continue for the rest of your life. Do you understand that? You're not going to get out of it because you are at a place where you haven't made a decision as to why you are still in a lifestyle. Now, if you are struggling because you have decided and do believe that God's word said that homosexuality, same-sex marriage, you know, we can say that now, but, you know, um, but same-sex attraction, all of that is a sin in God's eyes, then we can talk, okay? This ministry can talk to you. Uh, the body of Christ can talk to you because now you're at a, you're at that, um, you're at that fork in the road and, and it's like what I'm doing I agree that it is a sin. I agree that I am truly falling short of what God has for me. And I want to get it right. So that's where the definition, if you look at it just in Webster's or anywhere, it's, it's saying to you that it is an exertion or contention for superiority of contest. And it says that a violent effort or violent exertion, as in a battle, combat, tug of war, warfare. Okay, so you are in a place of warfare, mm. but there is hope Crazy. because if your decision, I mean, if your reason for struggling is because you've now gotten to the place in your life where you accept what the Word of God says about your lifestyle, then the the enemy oh of your mind is trying to hold on to what you used to do and, and try to convince you that you are wrong. You need to come back where it's comfortable, where you had a good time and bring up all kinds of memories to you to lure you back. But you and your spirit, you're like, no, no, no. I, I, I don't want this anymore. And so you need to know that there is hope for you through Christ Jesus because the, the, the warfare that we have, the battle is the Lord's, and he will show you how to get out of it. And for this message today, it's, it's like um, getting you to a place where I want you to, to think about what God's promises are concerning anyone that's in a battle. Okay, again, the, this, this warfare thing is something that it applies to anybody's life, but maybe you haven't heard that you also can, can cling to the Lord and find out how he wants you out of this and how he is truly the deliverer. It's first going to start with repentance. Okay? Repentance. And, 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 and you give that to the Lord. You just, you, however you word that to him, you just give it to him. And when he sees your heart, the true heart of your repentance, which is like, I'm, I want to turn away from this. I'm leaving it alone, Lord, but now I need your help. And right at that moment, do you know, do you know, if you ask Jesus to come right back into your life, because I'm, I'm speaking to someone who, to people who are already in the church and, and, and somehow they got uh, uh, backslidden or just caught up in a lifestyle that they didn't intend. They didn't intend for it to turn out this way, but it did. So I'm talking to believers as well as the unbeliever. The unbeliever, if you have ears to hear, I pray that you can hear this message and realize that it is it is the the the, the Lord Himself who can deliver you out of this. It's like the Lord says in battle, it's, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by the Holy Spirit. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. Because what you're in is truly a spiritual warfare. The beginning of this series, I, I, I just read simply from the book of Romans, and I started in the last verse of chapter 5 and read through chapter 6, 7, and 8, because it was the foundation of this. 
And um, this is at the point where I want to show you in scripture where this this tug of war that you're having, you know, with should I continue in this lifestyle or should I go ahead and be with the Lord is 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 a very real thing. And it is spiritual warfare, regardless of this sin that you are dealing with. And I want to just say this as well. I've said many times in different broadcasts that the homosexual lifestyle, that sin is a sexual sin. And it is a sin that is forgivable. Do you understand that? Many people in the church have um, taken um, homosexuality like it is the worst thing. Um, compare it to gossip, compare it to lying, compare it to adultery and all other things. And say, but at least I'm not gay. And at least I'm not this. And that's wrong thinking and it's not of God. And I'll tell you why. Because what God does, he will tell you what sin is. Yeah. And then it's up to us to, to decide if what we're doing, how we're living our life, if it's lining up with God saying it's sin. And then it's up to us, again, to choose if we want to say, if we want to walk with the Lord and we want to uh, reap his promises and, and, and blessings in our life, we have some things we got to let go of. And sin is one of them. Yeah. Okay? Just like... Just like anything else he might ask you to let go of. But sin is the main thing. Okay, It is your life. Because in sin, you can't walk with the Lord because he wants to purge you of those things. Right. But you have to allow him. So it is sin that keeps us separated from, from Christ. Separated from the Holy Spirit. Separated from God himself. So you need to recognize that. So, um, And also, you've heard me say this because Jesus said it himself. The only sin that is not forgivable is when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And Paul even said, I wouldn't even ask that you pray for someone who has done that because that is one thing that God will not um, forgive. So homosexuality is not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That I can say to you. But the lifestyle is sin and it comes under what? sexual sins, yeah. just like King David, when he committed adultery while he was married. It was a sexual sin. You need to understand that. Okay, so here we go. What I want to make clear is um, how Paul talked about the struggling with the sin. This is the warfare. This is the scripture that I want to um, show you clearly how it is. So we're in chapter 7, and I'm just going to read um, verse 21 through, um, uh, excuse me, 25, okay? And I always read from the New Living Translation. And this is what Paul said. He says, I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. See how you have to recognize that. Oh that is a very powerful scripture. Because whether it's homosexuality, whether you're a gossiper, a liar, a thief, an adulterer, the list goes on. Someone who has pride issues, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's sin in God's eyes. And you recognize that and you're trying to get away from that. But you can only get away from it and deliver it from it through Jesus Christ oh himself. Oh now we know that Jesus, and praise God, that he lived here on this earth and as a natural man, even though he never sinned, he understood the temptations that we all went through. He understood what it was like to be oppressed by the devil. He understood those tormenting moments when you're trying to do one thing, the right thing, but yet the enemy is trying to lure you to do the, the, the bad thing, the thing that goes against all that God says. So you need to, to know that this is a very real thing. Yes. In fact, what you can do, if you decide at this moment 
that your struggle has to do with the fact that you've already accepted and realized that your lifestyle is not of God, that it is evil and sinful in God's um, eyes, then you can apply his word to it. You can get to do that. And uh, the way that you can do it, which is very powerful as well, is to go to the book of Ephesians, okay? Because in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, Paul, because he knew what it was like for when he would talk to the uh, church of Ephesus, that, you know, they're going to be dealing with things. There's always this outside influence for believers to get you to, to live your life contrary to what um, Christ would have us to live, the way God would have us to live. So he talks about this armor that we can put on and it's putting on a full armor. You may have already heard this. You may have already um, heard other sermons on it. I'm not saying that what I'm about to say is going to be totally different, but you need to know that you can apply it to your life. It's not just for the other uh, sinners, if you will. It's for anyone who is trying to live their life right before the Lord. And we need it. Every last one of us yes. need it. The body of Christ needs it. We have, as individuals need it because it strengthens us and it helps us. Because guess what? As long as this world is around and as long as every one of us are here, we are going to have to deal with the enemy. You understand? We're going to have to understand that we are in this world we are not of it, but our helper is the Lord. And there is nothing he's going to allow you to go through um, by yourself. You have to choose like, Lord, I want you and I want your ways, but you got to show me. You got to show me how. And for you, this is his promise. He wants us to put on a full armor. Now, just in case, because I don't want to assume that everyone knows what the full armor is, but I'm going to read, okay, um, that chapter, um, the, and that the, the chapter and verse is the whole armor of God, and it's in the book of Ephesians, and Paul had wrote it, and uh, had written it, excuse me, and here we are. He says, um, after he talked to them about other things, about children and parents and slaves and masters and other things, he just wanted to let everybody know there's more that he wanted to say, but it was for all believers, okay? And here he, he says, a final word. It's just like saying from this point on. He's, he encourages first. He says, be strong in the Lord yes. and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will, you, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. And be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Now, if you think about it, the way Paul described this, thank God, he gave us a visual. Okay? He gave us a visual of what warfare looks like and what God has supplied to us, has given us to fight it off. And, and so he used what Roman soldiers, if you will, wear like uh, during that time when they're ready to go against an enemy. So if you think about it, the girdle of truth, when you put Lord, that on, what is truth? Thanks. The truth 
is God, okay? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So when you gird that, like put that on on your waist because you're holding things together, you put that on and you you can say, oh, Father God, greater is he that is in me, which is your Holy Spirit, than he that is in this world. And I stand here today, Father God, and I ask you with the spirit of truth that you just allow me, Father God, to see right through this deceiving this this deception that's trying to tell me who I am, which is contrary to what you say that I am. Spirit of truth, yeah, Holy Spirit, yeah. I ask that you guard me and that you protect me and you just keep me from believing the lie that the enemy himself is wants to tell me. You you put on that girdle of truth and you say, Holy Spirit of God, you stand in front of me and give me the revelation of who I am in Christ. Please do that for me, Holy Spirit. And you can say that to him. And then when you get ready to put on your shoes, and he said this, he talks about the shoes. He says, put these on. It's the peace that comes from the good news. You put on those shoes and you walk, okay? Yes. You walk in what the word of God says. You walk in the truth. You ask God himself. You say, Father God. Your word is a lamp unto what Thank unto you. my feet and a lamp and a light unto my path. Mm-hmm. And you walk and you're able to walk in peace. Why? Because you have the word of God, mm-hmm. you know, guiding you, which is the Holy Spirit, God, too, God. because he, he will tell you whether to go left. He will tell you whether to go right. And then it's up to you to listen. You say, OK, if you put that word in front of me that tells me not to go in a certain direction, I've already resolved in my mind. I'm not going to go God. in that direction. Oh, I'm going to go in the way that the Lord, my God, what his word says, that's the way that I'm going to go. And so you have that on. And so after you uh, put your shoes on, you got your belt on, you got your shoes on, and now you're getting ready to do what? You're getting ready to hold up your shield of faith and because that's going to... T- uh, combat all those fiery darts, all those lies, all that deception that's going to try and come against you. And you just hold that shield up and you say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I hold this shield up and I ask that you protect me right now. I ask that you don't allow any foul thing to come into my heart. I ask that I take the faith that I have in Christ Jesus who died on that cross for me, who said that my sins are forgiven as long as I repent. And I have repented. So that fiery dark that's trying to come in and and test the waters, it will not be able to come through because that shield of faith, I have that foundation in Christ Jesus and it is only he, it is only he that I believe and so with this shield of faith, I'm able to just contradict everything that that the enemy is trying to send my way because it will not get into my heart. It will not get into my spirit. It will not confuse my walk because why? I have the shield of faith, which is God. And I thank you for it. And then he'll tell you, um, he says, after you do that and stop those arrows, he tells you to put on your, use your helmet as a helmet of salvation because you already know that you're saved. You already know that you're saved. So you put that helmet on. It will assure you. You'll say, you know what? Every time I read the word every time I pick up the word and I hear what you say I hear what you say and yes. you say that you will take every word that does not align with you and you will you will disperse it you will you will just take it out of my mind and you say my mind my mind is a seed bank of the word of God and every thought that comes in there, everything that tries to be contrary to who God is and to who God says that I am cannot have any authority praise over God, me. I will God. think on these things. Shandiyah. I will think on these things and I will believe only what the word of God says. That is my salvation. Yes. I have been saved. I have been delivered and I have been set free. So I will think on these things because Proverbs tell us you can, you'll be able to say things like this. Proverbs says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Well, I think and I know that I am a child of God, so I'm not going to do the things that I used to do. I've already gotten rid of the old man. So thought, you have no authority over me. So you can derail those thoughts because why? You're going to use the word of God. You're going to start speaking the word of God and what he says about your situation during your time in that moment in the name of Jesus and then the sword of the spirit. And we all know what that is. That is 
the word of God itself. You need this, saints. Lord, Lord, you need yes, the word Lord, of God yes, because it will it will correct you. It will deliver you. Yes. It will comfort you. It will show you truth at all times. The word of God will allow you to speak those truths when you hear error. Lord, the word of God will allow you to speak strength when weakness is coming. The word of God. The word of God will be able to remove you from situations that you know you have no business no lie, no lie. being in. It is the word of God no lie, no lie. that serves us, that saves us. Lord. It is the word of God that restores us. And you need to know it. And there's other than the word of God, there are people in the body of Christ who God has set right alongside you to help you during those Lord, moments no when you feel like you can't even pray the right prayer. Prayer. You can't say the right thing, but God has people be, he has people beside you that can stand beside you like they did when Moses was in a war. You know, like whenever he was lift up his hands, you know, the yeah, Israelites yeah. won. And when he got too tired, you know, Aaron and them had to come and hold his arms up to give him strength. You need people alongside you other Christian believers sure. alongside you who will give you that strength in that dark moment and that dark time. You need somebody who understands what it's like when, uh-oh, I almost went there. My, 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 I, I almost went to that, that, that scene. I almost went to that house. I almost went there. And then God will give you a person to remember, to call, and you talk to them. Because on your level and what you're going through, that person can say, you know what? Sure, I've been where you are. I understand that feeling, but this is how the Lord helped me. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to tell you something that's very scriptural. Because the Lord says that, he mentions it in the Thessalonians, when we go through stuff, yes. when we go through our trials and tribulations, sure, sure. we go through them, and when he delivers us, out of it is so that we can strengthen and Shandia, help another person Shandia. who is going through it and Lord. let them know that it is God to help them through that. Oh, so oh, you oh, need to is. get with people who, yes, who have been where you sure, are. Sure, sure. But they want to take you where they are now yeah, in sure. Christ. Praise you God. want to follow those who are following Christ. You want to follow and be girded up with people who can strengthen you. Because yeah, what what do you need? You need that revelation you, every day. Praise you need it every day. Because without it, you will sink. You, you, you truly will sink. And the Lord loves you. And I tell you what, my God, my God, as I'm, as I'm saying this, I don't know who, these two names that came to me when I was even thinking about yes. uh, this uh, message today. I don't know who you are, sure. but I, I'm in faith. I'm just going to say it. There, you're, there's two people. They're in the body of Christ. Yeah, body. And I will call you brother and I will call you sister. Um, brother Nathan oh and sister Jessica, wherever you are, if, if, it, if there's anybody with those names and you're in the body of Christ, you're in a dark place. And you have been in a dark place for a long time. The dark place is the lifestyle. You already know what God's word says. And you have fought this and fought this and fought this. But you had no one to stand alongside you to support you. Yes, you know the word of God. You've tried praying the word of God. You tried walking in the word of God. But when your dark moments came, when the temptations came, you gave into it. And of course, on the outside, it looks like you still like what you're doing, but you don't. But you don't. Sure. You, you, you just need to go to the Lord and ask him to send you someone, a, a group, someone that knows you and knows to fight and that they will help build you up yeah. so that you're not walking around alone. OK, the Lord never wants anybody alone because we're not meant to be alone. Sure. And, and that's all I have for, to say to you. If there's this brother Nathan and this sister Jessica, if that's if that th those two are you, I, I'll just say that I, I have nothing to lose. But praise the Lord if it praise is. God. You don't even need to get back to me or anything to to affirm that this is you, because that's not why I'm saying it. I'm saying it because it, it's been on my heart and I'm I'm just releasing. That's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm just releasing that. And I praise the Lord for his covering for you and your life. There is um, more that I could say. I know that I put that I will be here for an hour, but there is a part of this message that needs to wait, okay? Oh my, oh my. 
And it's, it's the final part. But I wanted to give you enough to think about. Enough to think about today. So that you would realize that your struggle can only last as long as you decide. If you decide that you are tired and you are done with this, then please call on the Lord. Let him know that you have you have decided you want to give this up. I'm only struggling because I decided to give this up. And I'm going to tell you, there's, there's, there's no weapon formed against you that will prosper. Do you understand that? When you are in Christ Jesus, that's the key. You have to decide which side you're going to be on. Are you going to continue to yield to the flesh, yield to your old way, to the old man, and let it be unto death to you, which is a double death because we in 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 uh, Christ believe that one once we die, you know we're once to die and then to live, and those who are in Christ Jesus will be absent from their bodies oh, my, my, my. and present with the Lord, and those who will will resurrect and 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 be judged, sure. they will be eternally separated and they will be in hell with with the devil, and that's that's the the gist the basic. Thing of our belief and and we believe it strongly but here it is you need to decide you need to decide and I pray that you decide very soon I pray that you take your time and you get with the Lord and and allow the Lord the comfort of his Holy Spirit to help you to know the truth okay because he is the spirit of truth you need to know that you do not have to continue living like this. There comes a time in all our life, no matter what we're going through, we need to make a decision. We made to make a decision. Which way are we going to go? You're either going to choose life, which is is in Christ Jesus, or you're going to choose death, which would be very, very, very grievous to the Holy Spirit. You need to know that because we were all created. We were all created by God and we need to know where we stand with it. You have the right to choose him and the right to deny him. It's your choice. And guess what? He loves you anyway. He loves you anyway, regardless of your choice. But your choice will will let you know where you're going to be. And I, and that's all that's all I have to say on that. I pray that this message will give you hope. I pray that this message gives you encouragement, a, a time to think. Because when we come back the next time, and and God willing, if it's next week, um, we'll come back and we'll get into how the Lord will help us using his full armor. We can look at it very specifically. And and I think uh, it will be helpful to each of us to see how we can look at that. And I will look at scriptures as the Lord leads me on what is very specific to you. Okay, because what you're what, what you're struggling with and, and and how he can help you with that. So I'm looking forward to how the how the Lord is going to to bring that message to fru- fruition so that I can share it with you because it's in my heart to share it with you. God loves you and you really need to know it. You really need to know it. But it's time for you to make a decision. You're in limbo. That's the struggle. That's the struggle. And, and I just hope that you realize that you mean more to the Lord than you do to the enemy because there's nothing but death there. The Lord needs your gifts that he has put on the inside of you for his kingdom. You are very important to everyone. You are important not only to God. You are important to your family. You are important to those around you who work with you. You know, and they may not have an opportunity to to talk to you about what you're going through, but you are important. Every decision you make, let it be a decision for your life, okay? Let it be a decision for you to say, dear Lord, I don't know how to do this, but I want to be with you, so help me. And you know what happens a lot of times with people? When people give their life to the Lord totally, and they start walking with him. You have to know this. You're not going to have a perfect day every day. Sure. But what you have is a hope for that day. 
Lord, do you understand what you be able to see is when you have difficulties throughout your day and you have a relationship with the Lord, you will be able to see how he helped you work that out. You will be able to see his favor in your life when you allow him to draw you closer you. and closer and closer to him. Your, 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 your conversation will change. Your attitude will change. And excuse me, most importantly, what will change is your heart. Praise God. Your Praise heart God. towards other people and towards yourself. Oh, and you'll just want to just do the things that the Lord has put Praise on your God. heart to do for others. So I hope that um, today is a day that the angels in heaven can welcome sure you into the kingdom of, of God and be there for you and minister to you um, by the Holy Spirit that he can minister to you. So I just pray for that peace for you. And before I leave, I'm going to ask um, Chris to say a prayer. And then um, I look forward to seeing you um, the next time. The one thing I do want to say to you is this. It's a, it, it's a prayer that I like for people to know. It's a proverb, actually, but I use it as a prayer. And that is this. I want you to be able to say, after you've given yourself to the Lord and after you're trusting his word, and you hear other teachings coming to you that's uplifting Christ, that's uplifting the Holy Spirit and God and his promises, I want you to be able to say, when I lie down, I will not be afraid. And when I lie down, my sleep will be sweet. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Chris. Praise God. Father, we thank you today. Yes, Lord. That your good and that your mercy endure it forever. Yes, Lord. Father, today we thank you for Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Yes, Lord. That reminds us to trust you with our whole heart. Yes, Lord. And to lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways to acknowledge you and you will direct our path. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you and we trust you today that a way has been made. Yes, Lord. That the middle wall that once separated us has now been torn down. We can approach your throne of grace with boldness. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, right yes, now to yes, receive mercy. Yes, Hallelujah. This our time of need. You. Father, you said, come all who are weary and heavy laden. And yes. sin is a heavy burden to carry today, Father God. Yes. We cast our cares. We cast our sin. We yes. cast our failures, Father mm -hmm. God. We failed you yes. so many times before. Yes, Lord. But we thank you today. Today you're saying, come let us reason together. Yes. Hallelujah, declares the Lord. And though our sins be as scarlet, though they be red like crimson, you. Father, you have promised to wash us and to make us whiter than snow. Yes, Father, what's impossible with man, mm -hmm. what's impossible with myself, what's impossible with Reverend Waverly today is possible with you today. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray today in the name of Jesus. As we, as we have been led by your spirit and lifted Jesus up. Yes, Lord. And right now, despite of what we see and what we hear, Father God, in the natural, that there is a drawing. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, men, Lord. women, and children. Not to us, to follow us, to follow our yes. fan pages. Thank you, Lord. This isn't about likes and shares and Thank hearts you, today. It's about souls. Yes, Lord. And Father, you said he or she who wins souls is wise. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, we bring your people back to you today. Yes, Lord. Reconcile us, redeem us, yes, Lord. ransom us, yes. empower us today. Thank and you, now Lord. fill us afresh. You, you said there's one baptism, but many fillings. And I believe there are many listening now. Praise Thank God, you, they know the Lord. Thank Praise you, Lord. God. And grandma's been praying for them. Yes. Daddy's been praying. Praise Thank God, you, auntie has been praying. And now we're yes, standing Lord. in the gap today. Thank you, and Lord. And Father, you said in closing, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man, of the righteous woman availeth much. We pray your blessing on Reverend Dixon, on her family, on her health, on her ministry. Thank you, we Lord. declare increase, abundance, overflow more than enough. Thank you, we thank you, Father, in closing again, that her gift is making room for her. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. You, Lord. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Her gift is making room for her and bringing her before great men. May the words of our mouth, again, the meditations of our heart ever be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength. O oh Lord, our hope. O oh Lord, our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate your attendance during this broadcast. Thank you so much. 
But of course, you know, you can always look at it uh, on my fan page at any time. Please share it if you want to. Thank you so much. We'll finish out with a song that I hope that you can all relate to. It's beautiful.
you for listening to the Salvation for All Ministries broadcast. If you need more information about today's program, sponsorship information, or to be a guest, email us at RevWaverlyDixon at AOL.com. Be sure to tune in next Thursday at 1 p.m. right here on The Voice, 1704.